I'm not interviewing you. You're not interviewing me. This is the Holler View. Trying to beat life because I can't cheat death. Trying to beat life because I can't cheat death. Trying to beat life because I can't cheat death. Trying to beat life because I can't cheat death. Trying to beat life because I can't cheat death. Trying to beat life because I can't cheat death. Trying to beat life because I can't cheat death. Trying to beat life because I can't cheat death. I did 17 years, homie. Real tears on these words, homie. He can stay baloney, push ups, and hella top rhyme and hella notebooks with all my rhymes. It's like a map book from where I started. That's Hollowview. This is the Hollowview Dusty Session. The Hollowview Dusty Session. And who we have here needs no introduction. Fireball Entertainment CEO, Hector Hernandez. I didn't, hold on. Hector Hernandez, do your thing, man. Let them know where you from. What up, what up, what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> Born in San Francisco, raised in Sacramento. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? <coughs> so I I got a lot of both of them in me. <coughs> but I'm representing Sacramento to the fullest, man. <coughs> South area, Meadowview. <coughs> man, excuse me, smoking on this blue cook, man. You feel me? That's Top of the line, on this yeah, on this blue cook going crazy, man, on this quarantine shit. Shout out Loud Packs 916, you know what I'm saying? That's where I be getting straight my up, exotic. Straight up. straight up. Loud Packs got them goods, I'm telling you. Anyhow. Yeah, fuck, man, I ain't saw I fuck with. Man. I had, Hey, you ever heard of the mid-grade blues? Uh-uh. The, <laughs> the mid-grade blues, that's when you can't find no good nowhere around you so you got to accept the best of what you can find and sometimes that be that mid-grade and you just got to smoke it and you catch the mid-grade blues mm. yeah that sounds like some, that's not like that sound like some some atlanta shit exactly i'll be like this uh, they'd be like what you smoking on dirt i'll be like some some down south fire or some west coast mid-grade <laughs> right right straight up you know, because y'all call it mid here on the West Coast. That's why I said down south. Yep. You see the Cali or mids. But uh, uh <clears throat> so how did you get into the music scene? Man, um I think on a professional level, uh, because I always been doing music uh for a yeah. long time, like since I can remember. You know what I'm saying? I was for a long time, long time. I was I was in news I was in a, I was in a newspaper at two years old for you know playing the drums and stuff like that, singing and stuff. I got articles, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that. So I always been in the music. Um I had rap groups. I've been rapping a long time. Uh, you know, so I had rap groups, but on a professional level, I would have to say that uh on a professional level it started off with uh RBL Posse. Yeah. RBL Posse, that was my that, that's yeah, that's the professional shit. So I think uh, on some professional shit, I think I jumped on Hitman album. Yeah, I did. I jumped on Hitman album, uh, Rare Specimen. So I Rare jumped on a... Was Hitman no. album? What was it? No, Hitman album was called H2O. I'm H2O and, and, and Solo Creep. Yeah, so on the H2O album, I'm on the song Rare Specimen. Rare Specimen. You know you know what, what one I remember from that album that stand out? A Perfect World. For you and me, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was there when uh, I was there with. So I was there when they, when he made that song and stuff like that. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. That's a trip. That's a Black Sea daughter singing on that chorus. I was there when he made that song. And, and so they saw so that. So, yeah, so yeah. So on that album, I'm on the song "Rare Specimen." Yeah, on that I'm Ace Two. Uh, so so yeah so on that H two O album that was kind of like my you know what I'm saying my my um I would say probably <clears throat> on a professional level say my debut you know so what what about the don't give me no bammer days what about that in them days um I was in the youth authority you know what I'm saying so like even though uh even though you know that's family and shit like that and you know we come from the same neighborhood and all that stuff in the city um I was in the youth authority so like I was the nigga in the youth authority. 
when that when that album came out in '92, I was in the Youth Authority, and I was like, I was I was one of them niggas in the Youth Authority saying, man, when I get out, you know what I'm saying, I'm jumping right on the, you know what I'm saying, right on the shit. You feel me? You, you know, was in a lot a, of niggas. Was, was you in YA with with Sibo? Yeah, I was in YA with Sibo, and he's like one of the. He got out before me, so he came out. He came out first, like you know what I'm saying. It was like yeah. whoever got out YA first was gonna get was gonna come out first, so he got out first. And then uh, that's why I say like on a professional level, because when I got out of YA, I immediately followed Sebo's tracks and went to go fuck with uh, Freddie T myself. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm on AWOL. I was on AWOL Records, too. You know what I'm saying? So like I was recording with A. Yeah, shit like that. But I never did get a check. I used to be riding with T, you know, going to Stockton to record, going, you know, it's different shit like that. But I, <clears throat> I never did get a chance to. I never get a chance to drop because when T Freddie T caught that murder, then that kind of like halted my shit right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know yeah, how that so. I know how that feels. I know how that feels. But uh so uh what so what was so that was your first break music wise? And then so what did you learn from your early music experiences? From those experiences? Uh, yeah, because it, well, it's it, from that, it's really that experience alone, watching him go down like that, you know what I'm saying? I learned that, and remember, I'm coming out of jail uh, at the Youth Authority, so I learned that you got to take advantage of opportunities when they present themselves because they might not be there no more. So, like, for example, like, I mean, I'm on, like, people didn't never even hear me on AWOL. Like, I think, I think I was on, like, I don't know, I maybe did a few things, I don't know, maybe with Marvelous or something like that, but I don't think people really never heard me. On that at that at that time because he went to jail so nobody never knew that I used to be riding with this dude and recording and you know what I'm saying I had next I was about to, I was about to pop you know what I'm saying what about whatever happened to Pizzo Pizzo I don't really know man you know I wasn't really messing with too many people man like even to this day it's like I kind of like did my thing and I think that's what like like Freddie T and certain people liked about me I just was in my own little you know because. Coming from the Matterview area, we wasn't really deep like that. You know what I'm saying? Like at that time, like even when I was in the youth authority and shit like that, it was a it was a time when I was only one deep for like a whole year straight. That's what I, I was telling people. Like I just said in some of my interviews, man. Whenever you go to the pen, Old Park niggas is always the deepest. Always, no matter where you go. Oh, Old Park niggas. Like I only understand. Like when I got out of Wyatt, I used to hear niggas trying to like funk with Old Park niggas or funk with them. I used to be like, "Nigga, you crazy? Funk? You crazy as fuck?" Them was like some of the realest. I, I was like, yeah, "You can tell y'all must not been up against it because ain't nowhere in the world you're not gonna show love to these niggas like that." You feel me? Hey, when you hey, saw Old Park, you knew damn near well he was probably like a rider. You know what I'm saying? Just saying he was from the P. You knew that. You know, you knew that that was somebody you could probably damn near go to war with. Like, and it, and it was true most of the time. Like, you feel me? Oh, Park breed, you know, real niggas, gangsters. My, my my view is is the same. My view is this: I can't go from being on on the prison yard back to back with old Park niggas, Sally's with them, all the shit to where I know their history and they know mine. So I don't go from being brothers or up against it and it. Okay, yeah. It goes on hold. That, like I said, I mean, somebody calls. So I could probably edit that out later. So anyhow, so what what that means is if you on a line with these niggas and all of a sudden you come out here and you switch up to me, that just means you was never real in the first place or you never really been up against it to where this same person that you call a op is your celly and it's you and him and 50 Mexicans y'all got to worry about. If, um, if, a person could, if, if a person could click up with some crips in the pen for the sake of survival, then you can right. do that with the, you can do that with them. Exactly, bro. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? And um, like um, 
you know, and I, I never could be a nigga like that that was like fronting like that and shit like that. So like, I know, like I fuck with a lot of old park niggas. I mean, like love these niggas and they love me too. Like, <clears throat> I mean, they be tapping in with me so much. You know what I'm saying? Like, I go everywhere by myself a lot. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. niggas know. You know, n- n- you know the, n- the the real niggas. You know what I'm saying? The niggas who was really in them trenches like that. They love me, man. They know. They, you know what I'm saying? They. And it's like, and it's a lot of them from the P too. I got a lot of homies from the P, from the Heights. You know what I'm saying? Like, some real, some real niggas, and they, uh, they salute me every time they see me, man. You know what I'm saying? It's always, it's always a treat when, when real, real gangsters meet. You know what I'm saying? So, and I could never do that, man. That's why, I like, you know, when my neighborhood met if he used to try to like, you know, slide that, that way, like they damn near wanted some beef with the P or some shit like that. I used to be like, fuck no. You feel me? Like, yeah. no way. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe you crazy. All right. So let's switch. Let's switch, let's switch it up. What, uh, so as far as, uh, do you pay attention to the music in Sacramento that's popping right now? Um, I try to, you know what I'm saying? I try, I try to pay attention to, to as much as I can. You feel me? Um, it's so like, I'm like you, you know what I'm saying? I'll be everywhere to where I, I got, you know, friends and partners and, you know what I'm saying? Allegiances. You know, everywhere to where like I'm trying yeah. to, like I say, if I gotta be in um, in fucking Texas in two weeks, I'm damn near keeping my ear on the street to what's going on out there more than I am out here, cause that's where I'm about to be yeah. at. You know what I'm saying? For a yeah. week or where I'm right going. Or, so yeah, but as far as like Sacramento, man, I try to, man. Uh, but uh, I ain't gonna lie, man. So many people come and go. You know what I'm saying? It's like one 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 minute you tapping into somebody, you trying to get a feel for them, and then you don't hear them from yeah. from them no more. So it's like it's kind of hard to do that. But oh. yeah. I want to see. I'm one of the Sacramento's that actually like travel. Like I hit the road. Like we talk about Texas. I was I slid through Dallas. I had a realization the other day. Right, I had to ride the Greyhound through the. I got to ride the Greyhound to Louisiana, but that motherfucker took us through Dallas. Right, yeah. so we, so when I got through the El Paso bus station, I started to notice they had metal detectors and shit, and they was trying to look in your bags and shit. So I should have knew. Like the security was a little bit stricter right around there in El Paso. So when we left, man, while well, I pull into the border patrol, right? And my mm-hmm. girl had some my girl had some shit on a fucking carry-on. It's because we stopped in Vegas, because Vegas is my second home too. And we stopped through there. Man, that's you know the dogs hit that motherfucking bag. They had us stranded at the border patrol station for like a whole day. And I had a warrant around that bitch. But I did not know I was that close to Mexico. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole, I was other, that's the whole thing, man. Everything, everything works different. You feel me? Every city, every state. So, like, you got to understand the workings and got to be current on what's going on because it don't work the same. And if you're trying to <clears throat> run, a, run a playbook that you use over here, over here, like in Reno or some shit like that, you're going to get caught up because, you know what I'm saying? You were slipping. Stay up. Stay up. Yeah, but see, Nevada ain't so, the same like, as Texas. Like, Texas ain't the same as Georgia and shit. You feel me? Ah, see, that's the thing. I be telling them. I tell man, look, I went to jail in Gwinnett County, right? I had yeah. Florida, I had Florida, I had Florida license with Florida registration, right? In Florida, if you don't pay your insurance, they are suspending your license and your and your and your tags is about to be suspended too, right? So I'm in there. Right. I'm driving. I'm driving in Gwinnett, going to Snellville, and I get pulled. I get blurred by the police. I didn't even know my shit was expired. I mean, they took mm. my ass. And they, they was like, you can go to jail and post that bail, or you can stay in there for three days. Man, I told them motherfuckers, go, on, go on run them peanut, them, them, them hard ass, harsh ass peanut butter jelly sandwiches and that bag That's of right. chips and that frozen OJ, and I'm going to post up for three days around that bitch. But that let mm. me know it was real. Like you can go to jail for running a stop sign in Atlanta. Yeah, like you said. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I mean, like you know, like we saying, Arizona, different rules. You feel me? You catch a DUI, you, you fuck around, go to prison. You know what I'm saying? Like off the rip, yeah. though, the first one. You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand that, bro. That's key. You got to know where you at. You feel me? I used to travel from Virginia down to Florida, and I would say like the only the closest one that felt like home. Was probably North Carolina. That felt like home. Virginia had me hold my breath. Like I couldn't think right in Virginia. South Carolina, I didn't like South Carolina either. 
Then once you get to Georgia, that's still a whole, that's a whole nother beast because they, they operate off. They need that money in Georgia. They need that yeah. money. But I was all over, like, I'm going to give you another example of knowing where you at. You know how when you in Fulton County and you get caught with some weed, that ain't shit. You get caught with a, you get caught with a zip in Fulton County, that ain't shit. But you get caught with a zip in two counties over in Fayetteville, your ass is grass. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fayetteville, that's in Georgia, right? Yeah, that's that's see, I was I was all over. I was in Fayetteville. I was in Fayetteville. I'll be recording out there in the studio. Uh, that was that was couch. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah I'll be recording. Like I was in Fayetteville. Uh huh. I said I I was recording in the studio out there. I recorded the album out there in Fayetteville. Oh, was that? I, that's the like the first place I touched down out there in Fayetteville, and then I met a dude right. He had mm -hmm. went to jail for a roach in his ashtray. And I was chilling in Fayetteville. I had no idea what county I was in. And it pays to know where you at in that letter. That's for sure. Believe and it don't yeah. even, no, even matter. Like, somewhere I read the gun laws, you know what I'm saying? Read the, the main laws and shit like that. Because each jurisdiction run different. So, you know, that's part of it. You feel me? How was you feeling when you was in Walmart seeing young niggas like you and me with dreadlocks with Thumper on their side, all out in the open. <laughs> Man, I was just, just kind of like, this is, a, I mean, I, like I said, I already be up on that shit, the laws and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, I just, like, I, I understand it. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you feel yeah. me? You got to see it. You got to see it and understand it to know. You feel me? Like, because, you know, how it work. You feel me? They more so tripping on weed out there. Than guns and out here where we at, they tripping on guns way more than some fucking weed, right? You know what I'm saying? So like it's a reversal. True shit. So you been to the pen before? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Did you do like a did, how long how long did you do if you don't mind me asking? No, nah, I just did a few years, man. You know what I'm saying? I learned my lesson quick, man. I ain't been locked up in like damn the hell alone, bro. Like 20 years. See, that's yeah. what's up. See, people can learn from that. Like you got, like me, I had did 17 and then I came home and did like, and then I was almost out for three years and then I fucked up and went back for 22 months. I think I learned more in that 22 months. <laughs> damn near, than, right. damn near the whole 17. I had to man, know that fat man. I'm saying, well, why, hey, I learned so much in that 36 months when I was younger that, you know what I'm saying? Even though I did go to the pen and made mistakes again, you feel me? But, you know, that's what I did. I learned, I learned, you know, I be learning this shit. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't be, I'm in the shortcuts. Like, I don't got to take the long route. Straight up, straight up. So anyhow, anyhow, so let's get into something else. Everybody knows, like, especially everybody from Northern California, they know who JT the bigger figure is. I know Real who fact. JT the bigger figure is from back in dwelling in the lab. Yeah, get low players. I know him from back then. I remember looking on the, looking on the internet one day, and I was seeing songs. Y'all was making songs and everything. I'm like, damn, the homie from Sat got beef with JT the bigger figure. If you don't mind, like, what was that? What was it like going through that? Um, uh, like, like, like beefing with him. Like, how does yeah, like, that feel? Like, you saying from going from doing business with him and you know interacting. So now we feuding type shit. Yeah, yeah. Like what happened? Cause y'all was cool. Y'all from both from, both got Frisco ties and all the shit. Exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying. And more than that, you know what I'm saying. We both in the music game. So like, you yeah. feel me? I mean, um, like I say, uh, it's kind of like a bad business deal going wrong. You know what I'm saying? But it's a little bit deeper than that. To me, it's like a bad business deal turned into a nightmare. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, that's my worst That's my worst fear is to hurt somebody again. You feel me? That's why yeah. I don't really be in the street much because I don't want to hurt nobody no more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I try to avoid a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? I try to duck a lot of shit and, you know what I'm saying, stay to myself and all that because I don't want to hurt nobody. You know, so... That that's always painful to me when I when, you know what I'm saying when somebody bring that 
conjure up that spirit in me again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not just, just that warrior spirit, but just that to where I get like, you know, I can be a dirty nigga. You know what I'm saying? If I want to. You know what I'm saying? So like, that alone hurt when a nigga pushed me to that to that limit to where, you know what I'm saying? You about to make me turn into the credible hawk on your ass. That kind of like, you feel me? That, that hurt alone, no matter who it is. But then with JT, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really got no sympathy for these niggas. You know what I'm saying? To be honest, like, I really don't got no compassion for these niggas. At my yeah. age and my stage of the game, you know what I'm saying? I'm 40 yeah. plus, you know what I'm saying? So I, I don't got no, really no compassion for no OG niggas. I'm more so yeah. got, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm more so give the youngsters the benefit of the doubt or get a young, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But all the niggas, you know what I'm saying? I wipe them niggas down fast, you feel me? Like, quick, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, it hurts to, you know what I'm saying? To to get back in that, in that mode, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But as far as me and him being brothers or friends and all that shit like that, um, like me, I, 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 you know, like I say, even with family, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't even close with a lot of my family, so why the fuck would I give a fuck about some friends? You know what I'm saying? So, like, me, I know how to distance myself from people. You know, like you say, from doing time. You know, if I got to be around, I know how to, you know, distance myself. You feel me? Yeah. I be on my own. That's not really a problem. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. problem is when, you know what I'm saying, like, JT, he started doing, like, that fucking... Six nine Takashi type clout chasing type, you know what I'm saying? Like trying to, you know, make his own story up and put it on the internet and broadcast the shit. You feel me? Like now that's when the shit got, you know what I'm saying, to where it get kind of silly. You feel me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like that 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 that's that's uncomfortable for me because I don't really do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that was so, the, that was, y'all y'all beef was around the time the messy Marv stuff was going on. Man, it's crazy, man. I mean, 